Here I go once again with the email. Every week I hope that it's from a female. Aw oh, man, it's not from a female. Wait a minute. This is... This is... Mother of God. It is time. Grumpy Gavin recommends. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, this is Grumpy Gavin, and today we are looking at the Steam Autumn Sale. Yeah, so, it's been a little while, but uh, here we've got Steam Autumn Sale, basically the Black Friday sale. This is going to be going on uh, from right now, uh, which is, what day is it? Uh... Right now, Wednesday the 22nd, until November 28th, uh, which is uh, like six days away, next Tuesday. This is the Steam Autumn Sale. This is where you buy all the Christmas games and stuff. So, let's do a quick rundown. Last time, I recommended games that were $5 and under. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at different games. I... I went through my old video and I made a list of all the games that I went over in that video, and I gotta say, I did not leave myself a whole lot to talk about in this video. Um, maybe I'll just do $10 and under. Okay, first up on the list of things to talk about are the Steam Link. Now, Steam Link is this uh, little box. It's a physical thing in real life that you can buy, and Steam will send it to you. It's basically just a little box that could fit in the palm of your hand, and what you do is you hook it up to a TV in your house, uh, you hook it up to your home network, and then uh, let's say you got your computer in the basement, and your TV is upstairs where all your friends are at, and you don't want to lug up your big old handmade desktop that you built yourself with fancy parts from New Egg. You can hook up the Steam Link, turn it on, and if your computer is turned on and is running Steam, it will basically transfer all of your stuff over to the TV upstairs, and you can control it from up there. Uh, I have it. I've used it. It is pretty easy to use. It's pretty good stuff. Um, but I got it for a dollar, whereas normally it's $50. It's a little bit expensive. I would not recommend it for $50. I would, however, recommend it for $5. Um, yeah. It's a cool little thing. Basically, it, it you will want it if depending on your setup. You got a big computer in the basement, TV upstairs, you got lots of friends that come over and they want to play Jackbox Party or something like that. Uh, then this is, this is perfect for you. Perfect for me, too. Apparently, you can... Buy it along with John Wick, the movie? Uh, for like $8 for John Wick? Uh, okay. I enjoyed John Wick. That's a movie, though. We're, we're here to talk about video games. Yeah, you know what, what the heck, let's talk about John Wick. Uh, this is Keanu Reeves, starring in the 2015's John Wick, where he is a former assassin, uh, and due to some very generic story reasons. He is drawn back into the world of assassins to seek revenge for the people who stole his car and killed his dog. It's actually like a laughably simple story with simple motivations, but that's not really like that. It, it works with the story. Um, it, it, it's just a wonderful movie where John Wick is this, legendary assassin that literally everybody else in the movie knows about him and just knows who he is and the 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 biggest and most interesting thing about it is actually the world that John Wick inhabits um it's this underground world full of assassins and other uh hitmen and people who do various kinds of business with the mob and other things and They've got, like, their own organizations. They've got their own currency and their own set of rules and laws. Uh, combine that uh, very fascinating world that is further expanded upon in the sequel, combine that, that awesome world with the action of the movie, which is um, 
very focused on realistic-ish gunplay, uh, sort of... I say realistic, and then I immediately want to say the word gun-fu, or gun-kata, uh, for those of you who watched... Uh, what was it called? Equilibrium, I think, with Christian Bale, where he has no emotions and he uses guns. Anyway, um, it's all about that that close quarters combat combined with guns. Uh, excellently shot, excellently choreographed fight scenes uh, with John Wick. It's just a good movie. Very violent, though, I should say. It's a violent movie. It's got violent in the tags there. Let's get back to the video games. PUBG. Player Unknowns. Battlegrounds. Uh, if you haven't heard of this game, uh, well, you should probably stop living under a rock. It's not very good for you. PUBG is a... It's an online shooter. Um, first person or third person, your choice. The The basic premise of the game is it's like those, those movies... Uh, I want to say the movie was just called Battlegrounds or something. It was like this Japanese movie that inspired Hunger Games... Or, you know, if you're feeling more vicious, Hunger Games ripped off of it. Anyway, you take a hundred players in this game, and you drop them from a plane onto an island with nothing but the clothes on their back. And they gotta run around this island and scavenge weapons and medicine and other good stuff here, and uh, kill each other. Until there's only one person left standing, and they're the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, the game is currently in early access. Um, I have not encountered many bugs, and I have played it recently. Uh, I've encountered almost no bugs, in fact. I think it's a very well put together game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, so to ensure that, you know, people find each other, and it's not just like two guys left on this massive island, there's uh, this blue circle that slowly gets uh, smaller and smaller, and if you are outside of that circle, you constantly take damage. So, uh, a game of this, a match of this, basically if you die, you're out, and you just go back to the menu and start another one, or you can watch as your friends play. You can group up with up to four people total in your group. Um, a match can go anywhere from one minute to uh, maybe half an hour? I actually haven't really kept track of how long it took me to play the game. Um, but anyway, it's a lot of fun. Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Don't don't worry about these bad reviews. Um, hackers and advertisers. No, don't worry about that. I've never... I don't know about cheaters and hackers. Uh, there was a little kerfuffle earlier about people uh, going after... People watching streamers as they play, and then using the stream to find them and kill them in-game. Uh, again, I haven't encountered any of those sorts of problems. I've not found any glitches, not found any people cheating that I know about. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you turn your headset down, because uh, sometimes people can get a little loud. And for some reason, China number one. Let's talk about Fallout 4. Um, Fallout 4 is fun. I enjoyed it. Um... I know a couple of people that are all like, and you can see by the mixed reviews, a couple of people are all like, oh, Fallout New Vegas is the epitome of Fallout. Well, you know what? Fallout New Vegas is almost unplayable because it is so glitchy, and there's no way around that, so get over yourself. Fallout 4 is fun. Uh, it is not nearly as glitchy as the previous two games, Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Um, it actually improves upon the graphics. It adds a whole bunch of new stuff. Mods are great. Uh, you're basically, uh, yeah, here you go. For those who don't know, Fallout 4 is a post-apocalyptic, uh, game, post-nuclear war game, where you, uh, climb out of this, uh, nuclear vault, you know, a vault that is designed to protect people from the nukes. You climb out of it 200 years later after being frozen, and, uh, you're in the Boston area, uh, and this is 200 years after the nukes fell. Uh, it's got... It's still got that 1950s uh, theme going on. It's pretty nice. Uh, and there's lots of uh, settlement crafting is one of the big new things. There are ver a variety of settlements around the area that you can go on missions or whatever to 
uh, I guess, unlock them or have them join your cause of the Minutemen. And from there, you can go around and edit the settlements. You can clear out the trees and the buildings and build new buildings and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If you're really into settlement building, well, or if you're really into, like, base building, uh, it's a great game for you to get lost in. Um, and on top of that, it's DLC, or expansion packs, or whatever you want to call them, uh, are also pretty good. I played with them from the get-go, so I don't necessarily know what some of these are and are not. Alright, so Far Harbor is, I think, what you call the expansion pack. It sends you to a new area in the game. Um, and it's pretty fun. Uh, Wasteland Workshop... Automatron adds some evil robots, and there's a Robo Brain, and you do stuff. Uh, not to be confused with Fallout New Vegas's um, expansion, where you have your brain removed from your body. That was definitely one of the best stories or quests or expansions in the Fallout game in New Vegas. Uh, this one is just got some robots in it. Uh, there's another... Here it is, Nuka World. This one sends you to a theme park a la Disneyland, but it's based around Nuka, Nuka-Cola, uh, which is basically the game's Coca-Cola, but with a nuclear theme to it. Anyway, um, this one's pretty cool. It adds a whole bunch of new stuff. All of it's, like, Nuka-Cola themed, which is fun. It's interesting. Um, you basically go around and... Uh, you join a faction of raiders. So there, it adds like a fourth faction into the game, sort of. Um, in the main game, you have various factions you can choose to join. You've got uh, the, the railroad who want to save the robots. Uh, you've got the, the institute who want to control the robots. And you've got the brotherhood who want to destroy the robots. And then sort of on, like, the sidelines, you've got the Minutemen who just want to protect settlements and are really annoying. And then this adds in the Raiders, who are also on the sidelines opposing the Minutemen. So if you decide to join the Raiders in this expansion and become one of them, you can go back into the main game area of Boston and start <laughs> taking over settlements in the name of the Raiders. Um, so that's a lot of fun. This game is $30 for the Game of the Year edition, which comes with everything. I'd say that's a solid deal. I think I put in, like, at least 100 hours into this thing. 148 hours. It's a pretty good game. Uh, not to mention mods, so don't worry about the haters. As long as you can play it, it's a good game. Rocket League. So I played this game last year, um, before I got into Overwatch. Basically, this is the game I was playing for a little bit, uh, about 10 hours worth, before Overwatch came along and sucked my soul out for all it was worth. This is a sports game, and I don't really like sports games, you know, like Madden or uh, 2K sports, whatever those crazy sports games. I don't care about sports games, but this is basically uh, soccer, but with cars. It's like indoor soccer, so it's got walls and stuff. You can bounce the, the ball off. It's it's soccer, but with cars. And that is just fine with me. You got rocket-boosted cars. That guy, you can jump in the air and all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, look at this guy. He's racing around the court. You know, Rocket League. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Here's some gameplay. You're, you're booping a ball, trying to get it in the goal. You've got little... Jet boosters you can collect on the map to get more boosts. Uh, apparently, there's split screen. Uh, if you're into that, it's great on eight player online. Yeah, uh, it's you you customize a car, you play ball, and uh, I think most customization options are unlocked from the start. There are no loot boxes that I know of. I think maybe I could be wrong. It's it's been over a year since I played it. Uh, but it's a fun game. You guys have probably heard of it. It got really big on the PlayStation Network because it was free. If you have place, if you're subscribed to PlayStation, so you have to pay for PSN or whatever, and then you get the game for free. Uh, but it's here now. It's fun. I think it's coming to the Nintendo Switch. Maybe I don't know. It's a good game. It is 
ten dollars. That's pretty all right deal. You know, ten dollars. That's pretty solid deal. Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice. This is, uh, as you can see, I don't have it on here. I played it quite a bit of it on my friend's console. Uh, enough to talk about it. Um, this is a big deal in the gaming industry. Uh, a couple months ago. And sort of right now, still, too, although everybody's talking about EA and their loot box practices. This is uh, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. It's a game about a woman with psychosis. She hears voices in her head, which can be helpful or harmful in the game. This sort of acts as a tutorial, but um, the game is all about uh, the main character having psychosis or dementia or some sort of mental issues going on and the great thing about it is this game is able to portray a character with these problems uh better than any movie or book or anything is able to because when you see when you watch a movie and a character in a movie has you know voices in their head you're immediately going to be disconnected from that character because you don't have voices in your head I assume. You know, you're just like, oh, this character is crazy, and you know nothing about it. Well, this is different because it's a video game. You are the character. You're in control of the character. You have a say in what happens, uh, whether or not they live or die, succeed or fail. So that adds, that bridges, that builds up the bridge again between you and the character that... Uh, a, a similar character in a movie, that bridge wouldn't exist. So this is absolutely a game that everybody should play. Um, it's like a third-person sort of adventure action-type game. Um, and it also, in addition to uh, portraying psychosis in a way that nothing has ever done it before... It's also what uh, Ninja Theory likes to call a triple-A indie game, or an indie triple-A game. I don't know what they called it. Basically, it's halfway between a triple-A $60 game and an indie game. As you can see, its base price is $30. It's on sale, 25% off. Um, normally, I would try to shoot for, if I'm going to buy a game, I'd try to shoot for less than $20. But with this, this is the exception. Uh, as you can see, similar to Spec Ops The Line, and you guys know I have a huge heart on for Spec Ops The Line. This game is similar in its uh, in its in the way it involves the player in its gameplay, uh, and I would absolutely recommend that you buy this and show uh, the, you know the big name pub publishers that these sorts of games can exist again. And games don't have to cost $60, don't have to be riddled with loot boxes, EA. Doom! 2016's Doom. You run around with guns and you shoot things. That is literally what you do. It is the angriest game I have ever played. Uh, the main protagonist, the guy that you're playing, basically flips the bird to anybody who attempts to have a story here. Um... Basically, anytime somebody's ever talking to him or explaining why they did the terrible things that they did, he basically just, like, punches the intercom or throws the computer monitor away. This game is about running around and shooting demons on Mars. And it is wonderful. It is $15 on sale right now. Um, and the, the music is great, the gunplay is great, the action is great. If you're used to playing Call of Duty... Or even Halo these days. This one is going to throw you off. Uh, this is not a, a slow-paced, methodical cover shooter. This is run around, shoot things, and the only way to stop yourself from getting hurt is to run. Just don't stop moving. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. South Park and the Stick of Truth. Uh, the sequel just came out. Recently, South Park and the Fractured Butthole... Oh, Fractured Butthole, right. Anyway, South Park and the Stick of Truth is the first game that came out, 2014. Uh, if you like Paper Mario and those turn-based games, this is right up your alley. If you like South Park, this is right up your alley. This literally is just like an episode of the show. 
It's got references to everything that happens in the show. It's got references to things that I don't even know about in the show just because I haven't watched it since, like, season 10. I don't know. What are they on, like, 20? Jeez. Anyway, it's a good game. It's fun. It's humorous. It goes balls to the walls, over the top, shock value in certain locations. Like, I'm a pretty chill guy when it comes to shocking things that you can see you know i mean i i i can watch somebody you know get punched in the face and only cry for like five minutes i'm a pretty tough guy so and this game has some things in it that made me cringe like <laughs> uh, okay now it's, it's 2014 this, is, this game is over three years old i think it's okay to spoil it um there's a part in the game where you're in a, in an abortion clinic and uh, there are, for whatever reason, I forget why, but uh, Nazi zombies start appearing everywhere. And the big, the big, you know, you're running through this abortion clinic fighting Nazi zombies, and it all culminate, cul culminate, cul culminate, concludes with a big old battle with a giant aborted fetus Nazi zombie. And you're, I'm just like, oh my god, what is even happening right now? And the answer to that is South Park. South Park is happening for $7.50. You should definitely grab it. Dishonored 2. In my last video, I talked about Dishonored 1 and how it was a great first-person platforming action stealth assassin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is the sequel. It is just as good. It is... I don't want to say more of the same, but it's you know, expanded upon in all the right ways. Uh, very solid game here. Uh, you have the choice at the beginning to play as either Emily Caldwin or Corvo Atano, the protagonist from the last game. Um, you can sort of tell the game was meant to be played as Emily, probably due to some politics in the background or uh, focus groups, video game focus groups, the... Uh, the reason Bioshock Infinite has a terrible box art. Uh, for whatever reason, they added in Corvo Watano as a playable character from the start, which, if it's your first time playing it, it don't. He's he's exactly the same as the first game. Just just play as Emily. She's the this is her game. Um New Powers, new lure has been expanded upon. Uh, in the first game, there was a, an expansion. Uh, I think it was called, like, the Brigmore Witches, uh, where it was basically about the uh, Empress assassin Dowd, and he does some stuff, and the main antagonist of his little expansion story is uh, Delilah and the Brigmore Witches. Well, Delilah is back, and she is the antagonist of this game, and apparently Emily's aunt. Uh, yeah, and it's a really good game. It's stealthy, it's everything you love from the first game, and it adds a whole bunch more. You should go buy it. It is $20. Undertale. For $5. Undertale. Yeah, this is the game that took 2015 by storm. Uh, it's an indie game developed by Toby Fox, and it's basically like a love letter to Earthbound and all those Super NES games um it's good no it's good it's very good and i enjoyed it it's uh it's really like nothing you've played before and i guess for some people they're not feeling it for other people it gives them a raging stiffy um i liked it i enjoyed it uh one of the big points of the game is that you can go through the entire game uh with these monsters and enemies and adversaries and you always got to do battle with them you can go through the entire game without killing anyone and i had a friend of mine i recommended this to a friend of mine and i think he honestly played the game without realizing that uh and, and he was like man this game is so hard i got stuck on the boss battle with sans and it was just like forget it this game sucks i was just like well why did you kill everybody anyway Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. The RPG game where you don't have to destroy anyone. You can go through the, the to the very final boss where you're fighting this uh, 
disturbingly monstrous creature that I won't spoil for you. And it will, it will just, it will screw you up worse than Eternal Darkness ever did. It will mess with your mind uh, in what it's doing to the game. Kind of like Pony Island, in a way. Um, this is, this game is it's a little bit like Pony Island or Eternal Darkness, but a little bit more, uh, it, it doesn't knock on the fourth wall too much, whereas Pony Island sort of does. Anyway, it's a good game. It's like five bucks. You should definitely pick it up if you ever like those old NES games like Chrono Trigger or, uh, what were the other games like Final Fantasy? Uh, Cthulhu saves the world, that kind of stuff. Steep. Now, I haven't, I don't have this game on Steam, but I played a free weekend of it on the Ubisoft U Play or whatever it's called. Uh, and it was pretty fun. It was pretty much exactly what I wanted in a snowboarding game because I love snowboarding. Um, I wish I could do it more, but I don't live in a place that allows for it, especially with, you know, Climate's getting a little bit warmer, blah, 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 no politics. Anyway, um, Steep is basically like an open-world uh, winter sports game. Uh, you've got snowboarding, skiing, um, parachuting, and a wingsuit are your basically your four events. And I think there's an expansion coming out that's going to add a whole bunch more. Uh, yeah, Road to the Olympics. I don't know if it's out yet or not. No, it looks doesn't look like it is pre-purchase. Um, but the game, when I played it, it was, you know, it was a little bit glitchy. If you don't have a controller, it was kind of rough, and trying to perform tricks and stunts seems, like, not, uh, expanded upon very much. Like, I think there were only, like, two things I could do, and you just press a button and your guy does a, a flip or something. But the biggest thing I liked about it was, you know, I could helicopter the top of a mountain, fast travel to the top of a mountain and then just snowboard down it. And I could, there were like events and races along the way that you can jump to or, you know, go to and say, yeah, I want to do this one. Or you can just snowboard down a mountain for like half an hour straight without stopping. That was my, that was the biggest thing that appealed to me in this game. And I had played a couple of snowboarding games in the past, like uh, 1080 snowboarding on the Nintendo 64 and the biggest thing I was looking for was just the ability to start at the top of a mountain and go down like a real-life mountain, open-world style. And I think this is the only or the first game to really just let you do that. And it also has a wingsuit. I mean, this is like basic game design 101. If your game has a grapple hook, a jetpack, or a wingsuit, it is automatically better for it. So Steep was a lot of fun. I would recommend it. Uh, I hope they fixed the glitches. It's 20 bucks for the base game. If you want to grab uh, the Winter Games Edition, or the Road to the Olympics, or whatever that expansion is. It's not out yet. Uh, I think... How, how does this work? You get... I don't know what Gold Edition is. Does it, does it add things? Like... I don't know. You guys can do the research. Um, but it's 20 bucks for the base game. I'd say that's that's pretty fun. Speaking of jetpacks, grapple hooks, and wingsuits, let's talk about Dying Light. Uh, this is an another game that I played a little while ago. I even wrote a review about it. Uh, and if I recall correctly, in my review of it, I had a nice little line. Any game where you turn into Spider-Man halfway through is a good game. So, Dying Light is about, you are like a military CIA agent that is uh, parachuted into a quarantine city. Uh, there are zombies in the city, straight up. And you basically, your job is to like, make contact with the surviving factions, uh, do shady government things, like you burn a couple of suitcases filled with like the cure or something before you finally decide to you know go against what your boss is saying um that part is a little bit frustrating just because you have no choice in the matter but basically the game is mirror's edge you know first person platforming uh combined with zombie killing uh typically with melee weapons firearms 
Uh, like the Dead Rising series, firearms are powerful at first. Um, but unlike Dead Rising, as the game progresses, melee weapons get better and better. Firearms have a static damage output that does not improve over time. Um, it's fun. It's, it's great platforming. It's like... It basically improves upon Mirror's Edge while also streamlining a couple things out of it. Like, uh, I don't think there's any wall running, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it soaked up about 33 hours of my time, and I don't regret it. Have not played the following. Um, I hear that gives you the proper ending. Uh, I will say this, the ending to the game was kind of lame, but that does not that's not really the point. The, the game itself was fun. Firewatch. Here's one I didn't get to talk about last time. Uh, this one is currently $8 on sale. Um, this is a walking simulator. Uh, as made popular by Dear Esther and Gone Home before it, Firewatch uh, has a little bit more uh, player choice in it. The beginning of the game is sort of like this short narration that you can choose bits and pieces of your backstory. Uh, you're basically this guy whose wife has cancer, and you're just not, you just can't deal, or maybe she died, I don't remember, and in order to cope with the whole thing, you become a national, uh, national park ranger, uh, and you're the firewatch guy. You basically live in a tower in the middle of the forest, and there's maybe some campers here and there. And you walk around, and you talk to the lady on the radio, and you discuss things. Great story, uh, very interesting. A little bit, a uh, little bit of a thriller slash uh, not horror, but it's uh, you're you're sort of like, oh my god, what's going to happen? This is kind of scary, sort of thing going on with a little bit of the story. There's you know mysterious people in the forest, and you're trying to figure out you know who can you trust? Can you even trust the lady on the radio? And that sort of stuff. Uh, very great game, especially for a walking simulator. Uh, it's a great game. Eight bucks. Uh, I think I beat it in like three and a half hours. Uh, probably play it again one of these days, but it's a solid game. Killing Floor 2. Now, in my last recommends video, I skipped over the Killing Floor, citing that it looked old. Well, at the insistence of some of my friends, um, they sort of pushed the games onto me. I tried playing the first one, and yes, it does feel very old, and I did not care for it. Now, Killing Floor 2, on the other hand, uh, is not bad. It's basically a co-op zombie shooter game. Basically like Left 4 Dead, except instead of going from point A to point B, you just sort of survive on a map. I mean, you do go from one point to the next, and you sort of... Uh, buy guns, and I think it's like 10 waves in a game. Like, every game is just 10 waves of horde survival, and you earn money by killing zombies. There's different kinds of zombies. Uh, you get bigger and better guns. There are classes. There's a lot of classes, actually. There's a lot of guns, too. Uh, and the gunplay itself, uh, it feels good. Um, when you fire a Desert Eagle, it it feels good, especially in slow motion. Uh, I forget what causes it, but every once in a while, slow motion will happen. I think if like you do something cool or you kill enough people, you just activate slow motion. And some guns, when you shoot them in slow motion, oh, it feels good. Uh, this is a great cooperative game. I think it's uh, six-player co-op. I'm pretty sure you can get six players up there. Um, it's a first-person shooter, it's got zombies, it's a little dark, like, visually. It's kind of difficult to see on some of the levels, but that's okay. Uh, great game. Pretty fun. $15. I'd recommend it. Darkest Dungeon. Uh, this is one of those Kickstarter games where it's basically like... I'm trying to think of something that I, that is comparable to it. Um, and it's just escaping my mind. But it's basically a, a gothic roguelike turn-based RPG where you acquire, you get like characters in your party and you can name them and stuff. And as they go through, you know, you go through this dungeon, you fight monsters, you find loot, it's cool. 
But here's the twist. In addition to having to manage your health, you also have to manage your character's sanity. And uh, certain attacks by the enemies will deal sanity damage, or uh, like if an enemy scores a critical hit on you, all of your characters will take a little bit of sanity damage. And uh, if your sanity gets to a certain point, you will develop phobias, you'll develop uh, pers negative personality traits, like your character will become greedy, or he'll become a jerk. Uh, and then that will negatively affect the rest of the party. I mean, it, it gets to the point where, like, I legitimately just wanted to punch one of my characters in the face because he was constantly bringing the other three party members down. Uh, it's a very depressing game. Very, very tough to play. I feel like I've talked about this before. Um, I, I would recommend it if you're into this sort of thing. It's ten bucks. It's tough, it's a roguelike, you know. Um, I'd recommend it, though. I wasn't that into it. Like, I enjoyed it, but apparently only for four and a half hours before I just decided I wasn't going to play it. I'll probably play it again, though. Banner Saga. I think the last time I made this video, I had not played the game, but due to a... Uh, due to it going up on the Origin Access, whatever their paid subscription thing is, that I accidentally ended up with a year's worth of that, I got to play Banner Saga, and I found out it was even better than I originally thought. Uh, it's a turn-based strategy game like Fire Emblem. Uh, it's a little bit simpler than Fire Emblem or most turn-based strategy games. I want to say it's an indie game. Uh, and judging by the developer and the publisher's name, I would probably definitely think it's indie game uh especially since there's very little voice acting uh combat is very simple but it is a strategy game it's fun it's interesting um it's basically uh, this fantasy world where the story takes place uh very very nordic lots of viking imagery and there are these creatures these big dark evil creatures all over the land and you've got to go through and, uh, you, like, it's sort of tough. The story takes place across multiple different perspectives of main characters. You start off as this big horde of these giant, I think they're called Varls or Jarls. They're basically these giants that are immortal-ish. I don't know, man. It's a tactics game. It's fun. It's got a good story. And it's got, it's by people who used to work at Bioware. Uh, creators of Mass Effect and Neverwinter Nights, and you make choices, of course, because every Bioware game has to have you do that, even if it's only half Bioware. Um, and the choices in this game, they, they sort of really matter, and it's a little bit roguelike-ish in that your choices seem to pop up uh, at random intervals, and uh, you don't always know what the outcome is going to be. Um, I know there was one... There was one weird and interesting thing where basically um, there was an antagonistic character who was sort of in charge of a town, and as we took some of his people and tried to flee the town, he pursued us. Uh, we fought him, we took him prisoner, and the guy who used to be his that we that had us that joined us, like they started trying to convince me that the other guy was going to betray us or something like that. And, you know, you got to choose. Do you want to kill the guy? Do you want to take him prisoner? Do you want to listen to what he says? Do you want to set him free? Do you want to have him join you? And so on and so forth. It's And the decisions have, have consequences that are uh, immediate, consequences that are further down the line, and the consequences, they feel very real. And it can make you go, oh, man... I didn't want that, or, oh man, I didn't want that character to die. Um, and, you know, it can it can promote uh, what's called save scumming, where you're like, oh, I didn't want that, I'll just reload my save and get what I really wanted. But, you know, you sort of have to embrace the idea of living with your decisions, and that can make the game uh, a lot more interesting, a lot more... I think visceral is a good word for it. Having to live with your decisions. Uh, because, you know, taking advantage of uh, one character's abilities in a situation 
uh, might cause a whole bunch of your other characters to be very afraid of that character, and then she runs away uh, after the battle, and she's never heard from again. People who have played this know what I'm talking about. It's the Fire Archer girl. Um, but yeah, it's it was a good game. I played it on Steam Origin. I'm probably going to buy it right now. Uh, I have not played the sequel, but I'm probably also going to buy that right now. Um, if you like Fire Emblem and you like meaningful story, great and well-written characters, uh, and having choices that matter with, like, sort of a roguelike feel to it. Actually, it sort of felt like, uh, Sunless Sea, which is a game that I did not enjoy. Uh, but it sort of felt a little bit like that, but in a good way. Uh, this is the game for you, and it's only five bucks. Definitely, definitely recommend this. Alright, I think we're gonna finish out this video by talking about the Witcher trilogy, or the Witcher series. Uh, for a long time now, the Witcher 1 and the Witcher 2 have been... They're like they're always on sale for like a buck fifty or three dollars. Um, I haven't gotten to The Witcher three yet, uh, so we'll, we'll not talk about that yet. But let's start with The Witcher one real quick. Uh, this game is old. It's old. It's two thousand eight old, and it feels old. The combat you you can feel it, and it's rough. It's like a two thousand eight PC game, and you are gonna feel it. Um, is it possible to be played? Yes. And I, I can prove that because I put in 32 hours and I beat this game uh, in the last couple of months. I want to say I beat it this year. Uh, and it was good. Um, it's tough. I, I don't think there are any mods that out there that can change it. Or if there are, they're not like streamlined on the Nexus Mod Manager. Um, so you, you know what? If, uh, if you really, really want to get into the Witcher's story and the Witcher's lure, uh, you just gotta put up with that combat. And it is possible, I've done it. But the reason why it's worth it is because, like, this game came out before The Witcher 3 was even a, a, a dream of the developers, CD Projekt Red. Before it was even a dream of theirs. And this game is referencing events and things that will happen in the third game, like the Wild Hunt. Characters like Yennefer. Uh, people that I don't even know about yet, but I just know are going to be in the third game because of all the hype for the third game spoiled a little bit. Um, and it's, even as a standalone, it's got a great story. It's, you know, it's got some old uh, gameplay design decisions that uh, can be frustrating. Um, but if you can put up with all that, it's, uh, it's just barely worth playing. Uh, it, it, I just barely recommend it. Uh, especially since it's only, it's only a buck fifty. Uh, but it is a long game. It's gonna, took me 32 hours and, uh, I didn't, I didn't try to do too much lollygagging. I didn't do any... I definitely did not do any of the stupid little collect-a-thon side quests, because I hate those and I never do those. Um, but let's get over to The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. Uh, this game is an improvement on the first, and this is also the game that sort of uh, had everybody's eye back in 2011. Um, I want to say its popularity back then wasn't as popular as The Witcher 3 is when it came out, like, last year or the year before. But when The Witcher 2 came out, I did hear about it, and I didn't know anything about it, and this was before I was a PC player. So The Witcher 2 was popular when it came out, and for good reason. Uh, it improves upon the first game and all of its mechanics, and gets rid of the stupid design decisions. Um, still got a little ways to go, though. Uh, combat is definitely better. Uh, ish. I mean, when when you when you get right down to it, combat is basically just light attack, heavy attack. And I mean, you know, it it's doable. You've also got magic spells in there. Um, the great thing about this game is, I don't know if this continues on with the third game, but it can it, it keeps its consistency. In the first game, you had I think five magic signs to choose from. Basically, you get five magic spells. Um. You get Force Blast, you get a little Fireball, you get a Shield, you get a Trap, and you get Mind Control. And this game continues that. 
it keeps that. And it, it uses its little, it keeps its consistency. It's got the same uh, words for it. Quen, Yarden, uh, R, I, I don't remember. It's point is, it's consistent. Uh, right down to its very gameplay aspects, you've got your silver sword for monsters, your steel sword for men. Um, in, in case you haven't figured it out, this is a, a fantasy role-playing game. Um, in the first game, well, in all the games, you are a witcher. Uh, is basically a human that has been mutated, and you have to... Basically, witchers are sort of like bounty hunters for hire. They go around and fight monsters, but in the first game, uh, they sort of delved into the idea of not all monsters are monsters. You know, pretty pretty deep stuff there, I know. But in the first game, you delve into the idea of monsters also being humans. Um, and even, even back in 2008, the first game had... Uh, a lot of cool uh, design decisions, and the second game, you know, continues on with its consistency. Uh, it's got better graphics, better all-around game, very playable. Uh, oh, here we go, yeah, 25 hours to beat the game, uh, and I just beat it recently, as you can tell, within the last two weeks. Uh, very fun game. Um, there's basically this, there's this dude who's running around killing kings, and that upsets the politics of the world, and oh my gosh, the politics in Witcher. You need to have, like, an encyclopedia and a map of the world of the Witcher to even know what's going on. That's really my biggest complaint about this series, is I need a map, dude. And the game does not provide you with a world map until, like, the very end, in the end credits. It'll show you a map of what's going on, because apparently there was this southern empire the entire time that I, like... Ugh, so many names and words and proper nouns that don't hold any meaning to you unless you already know about it. But it's still a good game. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. It's always on sale for like three bucks. I don't even know why it's still 20 bucks total. Um, but it's good. And that's where we're going to call it for today, folks. That is our am. All of the games I recommend. Uh, if there were any games here that I did not recommend and you think are excellent, let me know about it in the comments, and I will have a meaningful discussion with you about whatever game that is. If there are any games out there that you're curious about, or you want my opinion about, or you want to know more about it, uh, also feel free to let me know in the comments on YouTube or on the Facebook page. Uh, I will be happy to discuss them with you. And as always, peace out, Girl Scout.